What can shadows, parrots, the Peaky Blinders, and a penguin teach us about language learning? I know what I know. You know. If you don't know, then uh, you don't fucking know, do you? And my favorite character from the show, Alfie Solomons, who speaks f at least four languages, is going to show us how this works. Go on. That is your plan. Warning. This video contains strong language, bad words, and situations which may not be okay for children or adults who sticks up their butts. Hey, hey! What's up? What's good? What's shaking? What's cracking? What's going on? How are you? Welcome to the first ever video of So Coolly English, a different type of educational channel for adult English learners who want to have fun. I'm Matt Cooley, an American English teacher living in Brazil. Today, I want to show you a fun, simple, and powerful way to sound more like a native speaker. In fact, I believe this to be one of the best ways to improve pronunciation and fluency in any language. And it's a lot of fun. To shadow. To imitate the behavior of someone or something. To follow and watch someone closely. This is exactly how we all learned our native languages, but imitating, copying, mimicking, shadowing the people we heard talking around us. And this is how you can master another language by imitating native speakers of your favorite TV shows, movies, podcasts, and even YouTube. When I say shadow or imitate, I don't mean just saying the same words, I mean trying to sound just like them. Most of language learning is practice. Wait a second, I want to make sure that you heard that. Most of language learning is practice! Practice, practice, practice. Shadowing is one of the most basic ways to do this, along with talking to yourself, reading out loud, and of course, conversation. It exercises the 200 muscles that you use for speech. If you don't think that's important, try asking an American to roll their arms uh, like they do in Spanish, or use nasal tones like in Portuguese. It can take months or even years for people to learn that, and a lot of times it's just because the muscles aren't strong enough to make the sounds yet. Just like a baby. And don't you hate it when you're talking to someone in a language that you're learning and you need a word but you can't remember it. I mean, you know the word, but it's, uh, it's on the tip of your tongue, but you can't say it. Shadowing helps develop top of mind. It just means that it's easier for you to remember and use words, phrases, and sentence structures in conversation when you really need them. And finally, shadowing forces us to listen really, really closely. So it doesn't just help with pronunciation of vocabulary, but also with your ability to understand what you hear. <laughs> we can break shadowing down into two separate parts. The first part is parroting or repetition. The second is substitution. In parroting, we repeat what we hear as many times as is necessary. You want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Sir, you want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Sir, you want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Sir, you want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? This is the reason that I used 
Peaky Blinders. Their accent is far different from my accent, so I have to work really hard, even though English is my, my native language, I still have to work really hard to try to change the way that I speak to match their accent. There are a lot of differences. Uh, I wanted to make this kind of realistic so you could see how it worked, and it's, it's enjoyable for me to... Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Take a look at my bakery. Do you want to take a look at my bakery? Bakery. 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 My bakery. After parroting or repeating, we move to substitution. This is where we substitute, we change, we trade our voice for theirs. No. We trade their voices for ours. <laughs> this is the kind of mastery phase. If we can accomplish this, then we can speak at the same speed as they do. Do you want to take a look at my bike, Ray? Starting to sound like an Alfie Solomons. I know. <laughs> so, what are the things that we need to pay attention to? when we're shadowing. What are the th elements that we're trying to copy? Oh, it says in this fine notebook right here, pace and timing. So the speed, the rhythm, okay? Are there pauses? Are there long pauses, short pauses? I'm a good tongue runner. Oh yeah, I know who you are. Mm. Oh yeah, I know who you are. You're a bit of a failure, aren't you? You're a bit of a failure, aren't you? You come all the way over here to this country in order to kill Toby Shelby, but... You come all the way over here to this country in order to kill Tommy Shelby, but... Notice that dramatic pause. In order to... kill... Tommy Shelby. Ah, I mean, well, he's not dead, is he? So, no. But, I mean, well, he's not dead, is he? Pronunciation. This is really, really important. Um, people talk about accent reduction a lot. We need to focus on vowels specifically and also on the difference between what is written and what is said. For example, do they say wanna instead of want to? In the subtitles or in the script that you have, it might say want to, but they say wanna. So we will say wanna. We want to focus on how people actually speak, okay? It'll wake up. It'll wake up. Granted, he won't have any teeth left, but he will be a wiser man for it. Granted, he won't have any teeth left, but he'll be a wiser man for it. Granted. <laughs> granted. This is the word granted. Granted. He changes the R, the A, and the T from the way that I would pronounce it and the majority of Americans. These are the types of things that we're looking for when we're focusing on pronunciation. And the last thing he will remember is your funny little joke, I mean. And the last thing that he will remember is your funny little joke, won't he? There are fucking rules here, yeah? yeah? There are fucking rules here, yeah? yeah? Fucking rules. Fucking. In the American accent, we would say fucking. Fuh. Fuh. 
whenever you're looking at vowels, watch the mouth closely. Watch the shape of the person that you're trying to copy, the person you're shadowing, and your own mouth. You want to match the shape. Fa, 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 uh. This is the American pronunciation. Fuck, fa, and Alfie Solomon's. Fuck, fa, fa. American, fa. Alfie, fa, 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 fa. Uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, fa, ah, fa, fa. <laughs> and finally, intonation, 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 and stress. The inflection. When does the sentence or phrase go up and down, and where are the stresses? So this is something that uh, is cultural. So the way that people do it in one place may not be how they do it in another. So we need to pay attention to that. <laughs> well, I've heard very bad, bad, bad things about you Birmingham people. Hey. I've heard very bad, bad, bad things about you, Birmingham people. Hey. They say you had your life saved by a policeman. They say you had your life saved by a policeman. Half policeman on my payroll. <laughs> Mr. Sabini uses policemen all the time. That's why he's winning the war in London. And you are losing it. Oh, it ain't over till it's over, mate. Oh, it ain't over till it's over, mate. You in the wall. You in the wall. <laughs> Do you know how to deal with emotional situations in English or your target language? <laughs> it can be really difficult to deal with these kinds of things for the first time. <laughs> And using shadowing, we can put emotion into something and practice that. So, parroting, substitution. Looking for our three things. Pace and timing, pronunciation, inflection and stress. We put all that stuff together, add in some emotion. And this is a great way to practice things that we... It could be years before we find ourselves in a situation like we can find ourselves in, in a movie or a TV show. So I'm going to put all of it together now and do my best at being Alfie Solomons. What fucking side do you want, Alfie? Give a fuck right now, kid. What? I I'm do not want him, him to spare me because of some fucking peace pact. I want him to acknowledge that his anger, anger is unfucking justified. I, I want him to acknowledge that he fights, fights by the sword. He fucking he dies by it, Tommy. So what they took your boy, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. You they got your boy. And what fucking line am I supposed to have crossed? How many, How many fathers, many right? How many sons, sons yeah? Sons, yeah? Have you cut, cut, killed, killed murdered, murdered, fucking butchered, innocent and guilty to send them straight to fucking hell, didn't you? Just like me! You fucking stand there. You, judging me, stand there and talk to me about crossing some fucking line. Do you pull that trigger? What? You pull that trigger for a fucking honorable reason. Like an honorable man, not like some fucking civilian that does not understand the wicked way of our world, mate. So, what did you think of my imitation of a British accent? Leave a comment and let me know. Do you have any questions about shadowing or language learning? 
What will you shadow first? Let me know in the comments. Remember, when you practice listening, I recommend listening to all accents, including those who are not native speakers. In shadowing, though, choose one accent and practice only that, okay? Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next So Cooly English video, where I'll show a bunch of different free resources to use for shadowing, listening practice, building vocabulary, writing practice, and even conversation practice. Don't miss it. Until next time, bye.